the collection, Lighthead, has a few poems of this sort of figure who I wouldn't quite say it's a persona. So I wouldn't say it's me necessarily. It's a, it's more like a sentiment, I think. And so the first poem in the collection, Lighthead's Guide to the Galaxy, the speaker in the poem, I think, again, is someone who's like my shadow, uh, but it's the sort of uh, philosophy that is trying to be the guide for the for the collection. I guess I would say, too, there's all sorts of weird things that happen in this poem. So it's Light has Guide to the Galaxy because I'm thinking about the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And there are actually two moments in the poem, although I only explicitly reference one at the back of Lighthead, that come out of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. One is uh, Ask a Glass of Water, which is a line in it. And then there's this other line about monkeys and an infinite number of monkeys will make an infinite number of manuscripts, which is a riff on the idea of, you know, how you get Shakespeare's play or the, na- the nature of production. But again, all those things just sort of fall to the back when you really get deep into the ink of it and you're just trying to make something. So I typically don't mention half the things that are, are a catalyst for a poem like this one. But maybe it's a sort of an Ars Poetica, Lighthead's Guide to the Galaxy. Ladies and gentlemen, ghosts and children of the state, I'm here because I could never get the hang of time. This hour, for example, would be like all the others were it not for the rain falling through the roof. I'd better not be too explicit. My night is careless with itself, troublesome as a woman wearing no bra in winter. I believe everything is a metaphor for sex. Love making mimics the act of departure. Moonlight drips from the leaves. You can spend your whole life doing no more than preparing for life and thinking, is this all there is? Thus, I am here where poets come to drink a dark, strong poison with tiny shards of ice, something to loosen my primate tongue and its syllables of debris. I know all words come from pre-existing words and divide until our pronouncements develop selves. The small dog barking at the darkness has something to say about the way we live. I'd rather have what my daddy calls scrimp. He says discreet and means the street just out of sight. Not what you see, but what you perceive. That's poetry. Not the noise, but its rhythm. An arrangement of derangements. I'll eat you to live. That's poetry. I wish I glowed like a brown-skinned pregnant woman. I wish I could weep the way my teacher did as he read us Molly Bloom's soliloquy of yes. When I kiss my wife, sometimes I taste her caution. But let's not talk about that. Maybe art's only purpose is to preserve the self. Sometimes I play a game in which my primitive craft fires upon an alien ship whose intention is the destruction of the earth. Other times I fall in love with a word like somberness or moonlight juicing naked branches. All species have a notion of emptiness and yet the flowers don't quit opening. I'm carrying the whimper you can hear when the mouth is collapsed, the wisdom of monkeys. Ask a glass of water why it pities the rain. Ask the lunatic yard dog why it tolerates the leash. Brothers and sisters, when you spend your nights out on a limb, there's a chance you'll fall in your sleep. You know, when I engage this poem, I find all kinds of like individual moments that are connected to these. It's like the tip of an iceberg in the water, which is a weird sort of thing because it makes it difficult to maintain a kind of presence or kind of like immediacy with the poem. So, for example, every time I come across, uh, I wish I could weep the way my teacher did as he read as Molly Bloom's soliloquy of yes, I'm instantly to Ulysses. And there's a long chunk of it, which I think, you know, I don't know if everybody knows it, but it's a long, there's a long chunk that is yes, yes. And it's, it's Molly Bloom sort of speaking. And this old professor I had in college, you know, was, who was like, he looked like Cary Grant, but he was a real hard ass and he, he raised horses and he cussed and he drank and he smoked, but he read this section and he started weeping. And, you know, everybody was shocked. But, you know, of course, now being a professor and he we, we maintained our relationship long after I graduated, but he passed away, which I think also is why he sort of came into my purview. So just thinking about that kind of like uh, that display and that sort of relationship to 
to a text is something that's just, again, it's sort of outside of the poem. I don't say who he is. It's not really a, a poem about him. But when I read the poem, there's all these moments that sort of go back to these other real moments. So, which I think is okay. I mean, I think that that's a fine thing, but it's the kind of poem that I don't read for that reason. I think people think because there are poems, it's easy to read them, but, but there are experiences too, our being like, you know, the creator. So yeah. sometimes it does really send you right back. Wow. That's an amazing thing, I think, about writing, you know, because again, I, I mean, I've I majored in painting in college and I, I still paint and I still don't think it's the, the same. Like I could be completely emotionally engaged in the act of painting, in the moment of doing the painting. But if by the time the paint's dry, you know, I'm thinking, oh, that's not bad. But I don't go back to that moment of conception, which some poems, I think, you know, have a capacity to do, even when they're not your your poems, when they're someone else's poems, I think they have a capacity. And it, maybe this is true about music too, right? Like it just has a way to almost throw you through some sort of time portal and you're back to that initial experience, which is a great thing, I think. That's about as much control we have over time, which is partly what the poem is saying. You know, and I think partly what the manuscript is exploring too, that idea of uh, not being able to get the hang of time, of growing old or uh, growing distant or, yeah. That was Terence Hayes reading from and commenting on his new book, Lighthead, from Penguin Poets, released this April. Thank you once again for joining us on A Cup of Poetry. See you in two weeks.